so let me try this again. So target check, here we go. So as I'm going over this, if you're sitting there and you're like, I got 29 out of 30, I rule, then awesome. Don't waste your time sitting here listening to me get started on worksheet 3A, unless you want to listen, okay? Um, please, though, make sure, if you're not listening, make sure that you're 100% sure you understand everything, okay? All right, so here we go. Uh, numbers one and two, there's the answers. Uh, so double check and make sure I didn't make any mistakes as, as I was grading it. That's what the answers should be, I think. Per, I, don't, I don't know if anybody lost any points on those. Uh, one person forgot to do number two. Uh, Is that you? Uh, don't do that. <laughs> Question? Uh, well, no, good. All right, everybody good with one and two? All right, number three, normal force. The most common comment, it's a weird sentence, that I made on this target check was this. Fn does not equal Fg. All right? It is often true that your normal force equals your force of gravity, but it is absolutely not always true. Okay? So let me show you guys this. Let me show you guys a quick demo. All right? So here's what I want you guys to do. Everybody who is in this row, this row, and this row, I would like you to stand up and hold your desk in your hands like this. Like literally, stand up. You're not in a row. Everybody, yep, this row, this row, and that row. Yes, stand up and hold your desk. Be like me, line up. Is everybody holding their desk? All right, so I would like you to all turn 90 degrees this way. All right, now, if I leave you like that all day, you're going to get tired and you're going to get pissed off at me, right? So listen, so right now, shh, sorry. So right now, gravity is pulling those desks down with a force of whatever, 500 newtons, right? And if I leave you there all day, you're going to get tired, right? All right, those of you who are still sitting, help them out. Lift up a little bit. Not enough to actually lift it, but help them a little bit. Give them a hand. I'm super mad All right? So, you guys who just came along and helped, you guys are Roy. You're lifting up a little bit. You guys who were originally holding it are the normal force. All right? So when the sitting person came and helped, what happened to the force you were exerting? Oh, Alright, set him down, set him down. Okay. Alright, look. John, you gotta, you gotta help out for one more second. So, do you mind me dying? Alright, so look, you guys. Here's all I'm trying to get at. And I did not do a good job front loading this. Look, so right now, John is the normal force. He's holding the, the box up, right? Good? Yeah. And he's going to get tired if I leave him here all day, right? right. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to help out. But I'm not very strong. I can't actually lift the table. But I can at least help him. So what are you doing now that you weren't doing before? Holding this up, like... Yeah, you're not, he's not holding with as much force as he was before, right? Yeah. What did I just do? By me lifting up with a little bit of force, I've decreased the normal force, right? Good? Cool. Thanks. Does, does that make any sense? So you guys holding that represents the normal force, right? When somebody comes along and lifts up, that changes the normal force. What if you decided to be an asshole and push down on the table? <laughs> then you're increasing the normal force, right? Yeah. Follow? Yeah. Okay. The normal force does not always equal the force of gravity. It often does. It does if your object has a constant vertical velocity and the only two forces are gravity and normal force. Okay. Yeah, Abby? Um, so there, is there always a normal force? Okay, so let's talk about that. So where does the normal force come from? Sure, we got time. Uh, the normal force is what's acting against gravity, or like to keep it from Yes, some of the time. But we need to be a little more specific. That example I just gave you there was a little bit flawed, because normal force doesn't usually come from a person. It comes from an inanimate object. It comes from an inanimate surface. Okay, so when is there a normal force? There's a normal force if your object is in contact with some sort of inanimate surface. Like the floor of an elevator, or a tabletop, or something like that. It's holding it up from you. That's holding it up and preventing it from falling through that surface. Okay, and I wrote this on a bunch of target checks. Another way that you can think of normal force, and some people have found this more helpful, is this. Look, there's my water bottle, right? I'm going to push it down. I can't do it. Because the table is there, the normal force is preventing the water bottle from going through the table. 
That's what the normal force basically does. It ensures that your object doesn't go through the surface. And it exerts exactly as much force as is needed to prevent that from happening. Does that make sense? Because right now there are two things pushing this water bottle down, right? Me and gravity. And the normal force is going to push just hard enough to prevent the bottle from moving down through the table. Cool? All right. So general questions about normal force before we do number three and four, which were about normal force. Cool. So the last thing I'll say, normal force. As you are solving problems, normal force should always be the last vertical force you draw. Okay? A lot of people are just right away doing gravity normal force and making them equal. No. no, no. So your normal force is sort of filling in the blank. It's like just making sure that your thing doesn't go through this table. All right? So with that in mind, let's do this. So number three, here we go. It says make a free body diagram for the object. How many of you guys used 9.8? Most of you, okay, we'll use 9.8. Okay, cool, so here we go. So here's the box. Mass, 25 kilograms. Every single free body diagram I draw, I'm gonna start, every single free body diagram I draw, I'm gonna start by putting in the mass and the force of gravity. Okay, always, without exception. So mass, force of gravity. Is everybody cool with how I got this negative 245? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just 25 times 9.8, right? Yeah. All right, so that's always step one. Step two, identify any given forces. Read the problem. Does it describe any given forces? Let's see. Roy lifts up with a force of 100 newtons. Oh, that's a given force. I'm going to draw that. That's easy. I don't even need to think to do that. Good. Once you've gotten to that point, it's no longer just plug and chug. You have to stop and think. This is not like chapter one where it's write out your givens and plug them into an equation. Okay? You've got to think about what's happening. All right? So what is Roy trying to do to the box? He's trying to lift it, yes? Is 100 newtons enough to lift something that weighs 245? No. 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 So what's the box going to do? It's going to stay there. It's going to not move, right? He's trying to lift it and failing. And therefore, my acceleration must be zero. And if the acceleration is zero, then the net force is zero. Please, please, please. I was alarmed at the number of people who had a zero in one of these spots, but not both. There's no way that's right. Okay? Because remember, the second law tells us if one of those is zero, they're both zero, right? Okay? All right, so let's see. I feel like we're making progress. We have decided 100 newtons wasn't enough to lift it. That means it's not going to move, and so our net force has got to be zero. So now let's look at the, the drawing doesn't agree with that, does it? The drawing shows there being more downward force than there is upward force. So if I left it like this, my object would be moving down through the table. But the normal force doesn't want that to happen, right? The table's in the way, right? So, oops, I said the table's in the way. So, what force am I forgetting? Normal force. Let's figure out how much force the normal force has to be. So, we're missing a force. So, anytime you're missing a force, write out an equation. Let's see. Net force is force of gravity plus force of Roy plus normal force. And solve for the missing one. My net force has to be zero. Gravity is negative 245. Force of Roy is 100. Find the normal force. What's it got to be? 145, right? So if you can solve it without going through this, great. But that's the process. Does that make sense? Everybody good? All right. Does anybody else add something said, Jerry? Will somebody let Ray know that I'm recording this so he can watch this video? Because I know he was upset about this target check. Uh, hi, Ray. Uh, hey. Um, on the test, we'll, we will use like maybe 9.8, right? Yeah, I, I, that was a, a failed experiment. We're going to just always go back to 9.8. Oh, okay. But if we use 10 on this, it's fine? It's fine, yeah. Okay, yeah. I was thinking it would save time, but I think it confused more people so as opposed to saving time. It's just easier to punch and calculate Yeah. I just figured it would be easier to multiply by 10, but whatever. Okay, so is everybody good? 
Any questions with part A? So this is exactly what I just showed you guys, right? Everybody was, so this, this represents, this represented the person coming over and helping, right? And reducing your normal force. Cool? Cool. Man, I'm melting today. Okay, um, let's see, part B, we've got the same 25 kilogram box. Gravity is pulling it down with a force of negative 245 newtons. Always start with the same thing, mass and force of gravity. <coughs> Step two, given forces. Let's see, oh, Roy lifts up with 300 newtons. So put it in your drawing, force of Roy. 300 newtons. Cool? Yeah. Step three, think. Is there going to be a normal force? No, why is there no normal force this time, guys? Good. Remember, the normal force comes from the table. But he just lifted it off the table. How do I know he lifted it this time, but he didn't last time? Because this 300 newtons is more than gravity, so he succeeded this time. Last time, the 100 newtons wasn't enough. This time, 300 newtons is enough. So hooray, we've lifted it. There's no normal force. Follow? So, what should I do now? Find the net force. I can do that because these are all of my forces. I got Roy and gravity, and that's it. Those are the only two forces. So add them up, and you get, uh, what, 55 newtons? What are you going about over there? Nothing. You sure? Yeah. All right. All right, so now, now that I know the net force, what can I find? Acceleration, Acceleration right? So... Uh, mass, or sorry, net force over mass. So 55 over 25 gives you what? 2.2 meters a second squared? Cool. So Lucy, I did not bounce the question back to you. What do you think? Uh, crunchy or smooth? Oh, it's definitely crunchy. Yeah, for, uh, for all purposes? Yeah. Oh, I see, I see that Mr. <laughs> Coyle disagrees. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Hey, do, so before you get too disagree e, try it on an apple. Try crunchy peanut butter on an apple. Right. Oh, but I'm with you on toast or bagel or something. It's got to be creamy. Or peanut butter and jelly. All right, everybody good with number B? Number B. Number B. All right, I'm moving on. Is that good? All right, number four. So this time, uh, well, it's the same process. So Roy has a mass of 80 kilograms. He's in an elevator. So here's the floor of the elevator. Here's Roy. Hello. Okay, he's got a mass of 80 kilograms. Put in your force of gravity. 80 times 9.8 is 784 newtons. So that was step one, mass and force of gravity. Step two. Step two, uh, any given forces? There aren't any on this one, are there? There are literally no forces given to you in the problem. So now we got to think. So what else does it tell us? Let's see. It tells us that he's moving down at 6 meters a second. So my VI is sort of 6 meters a second. A lot of you missed. It's got to be negative because he's going down. All right. And then after a time of 2 seconds, our goal is to make our final velocity be 0 because we are trying to slow him to a stop. Why did I give you all that business there that I just wrote in green? Find the acceleration. So if you do that, you get 3 meters per second squared. Good? All right, if you only learn one thing today, here's the thing I want you to learn. Once you know the acceleration, knee-jerk reaction, instinct, it needs to be instinct. Once you find the acceleration, automatically find your net force. Okay, it will make your life easier. All right, so net force is, oh, well, that's just mass times acceleration. So 3 times 80, that's 240 newtons. Notice it's positive. A lot of you guys have negative because of the, because of the sign issue. Think about this. If, Roy's, if something is moving down and you want to stop it from moving down, which way do you have to push it? Up, right? We're trying to stop the downward motion. 
Okay? So imagine catching something. Well, that doesn't work because it's not heavy enough. But if I pick up a heavy thing and drop it, to catch it, you gotta push it up, right? Alright, so now um, everybody get up to there. Alright, but we're still not done because my drawing doesn't show the net force being 240. So what other forces are there besides gravity, you guys? Normal force? Anything else? Uh, oh, good. Friction. Is there friction? The only time you need to worry about friction, you guys, is if the object is either sliding or something is trying to make it slide. Right? Is Roy sliding on anything? No, he's just standing there in an elevator, right? Is anything trying to make him slide? No. So there's no friction here. Okay, there are a couple people on those air resistance problems that wanted to put in friction. Only if the object is sliding. That's the only time you have to worry about friction. All right? So here's the deal. Here's what I was trying to get at when, with, with my line of questioning. There were a ton of people, not a ton, but enough that it's worth commenting on. There were a bunch of people who put in gravity and then two other forces, normal force and force of elevator. What is normal force, you guys? Yeah, it's the force that comes from the surface the object is standing on. What's Roy standing on? The elevator. So the normal force is the force of the elevator. Just like in the last problem, the normal force was the force of the table. Good? So the only other force acting on Roy here is the normal force. And now we just got to figure out how big that normal force has to be. Okay? So... Figure out how big it has to be. Let's see. Net force is, well, we're missing our normal force. We know gravity. We're looking for normal force. So our net force is 240. We found that using Newton's second law. Force of gravity is negative 784. We don't know the normal force, so solve for it. So add 784 to both sides, and you get 1024. Um, so mathematically, it's because your VI is n negative 6. So it's VF minus VI. You get 0 minus negative 6 over T. Oh, yeah. Conceptually, which maybe is more useful, yeah. you're moving down so your velocity is negative. But then to slow your downward motion, your velocity has to get less negative, which is actually an increase. So like moving backwards and slowing down. Oh. Like those, thank you. Was that a genuine O okay, or yeah, was that a okay? All right, everybody good with that one? All right, normal force is not equal to gravity. Okay, it is sometimes, but not always. Any problems? Okay, cool. So four B. After all that, after spending all that time telling you that normal force was not equal to gravity. Now we're going back to problems where the normal force equals gravity. Oh my gosh, why is there no middle ground? Right? It's like either teeny or... All right, let's see. 80 kilogram box sits on the floor. Mass, 80 kilograms. What's the first thing I should do? Put in the force of gravity. 80 times negative 9.8 is negative 784 newtons. That's step one, mass and force of gravity. Step two, any given forces. Well, it tells us that Roy pushes it with 300 newtons, so put that in. Force of Roy, 300 newtons. And that's it. Oh, no, it tells us giving it an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. I just, okay, so like two minutes ago I said to you, if you only learn one thing today, Anytime you know the acceleration, find the net force. If you know the acceleration, find the net force. So here we can find our net force. Let's see. Mass is 80 times 3, so you're going to get 240 newtons for net force. Cool? Everybody good? Okay. So now we got to think. All right, uh, so point for me, you guys. Which way is the box moving, presumably? Isn't it going to move to the right? Because that's the direction Roy's pushing it, and it's accelerating, and it seems pretty clear that that's 
the direction it's going to move in, right? Tom, you okay back there? Hanging in? All right. Uh, is it going to move up or down at all? Uh-uh. So, but according to my drawing, gravity is pulling it down. What's going to prevent the box from moving down? Joey, what do you got? Normal force, right? There's got to be a normal force. And how big does it have to be in this problem? It's going to be 784 in this one, right? Because the only two up and down forces are gravity and normal force. And it doesn't move up or down. So our normal force here has got to be 784. Questions on that? Well, Sean, you had a question. What do you got? Ooh. Uh, Ha, for for B, where did you get a negative from? Because the, um, the BI was 6 and the Oh, you're still back on A. Oh. That's okay. Oh, never mind. That's okay. Let's, let's, let's clear it up. We're, no big deal. Your VI is not 6. It's negative. It's negative 6. Oh, okay. Because it's going down. Okay. So Good? Okay. Yeah. No big deal. All right. So... Is everybody on board with what we've done so far? All right, are we missing any forces? What forces could we be missing? Friction, right? So the box is moving this way, so which way is friction going to go? To the left. What kind, static or kinetic? Kinetic, because I know it's sliding. I know it's moving, right? Can I find that force of kinetic friction? Yeah, we're missing a force, right? So let's see. Net force is the sum of all my forces. So it's the force of Roy plus the force of kinetic friction. I am going to choose to ignore gravity and normal force. Why is that okay? They cancel out anyway, right? So don't worry about them. All right, and solve for your missing force, right? You get 240 equals 300 plus kinetic friction. Solve it, and you get, what, negative 60? All right. Um, so last thing is find this coefficient of friction. So I think this is a thing that I didn't stress enough, you guys. When you use this equation, either of the friction equations, either this one or static, you assume everything here is positive. And if there's anything negative, you've got to put the negatives in on your own. OK? So that just gives you the size of the forces, not the direction of the forces, all right? So to find our coefficient of friction, we've got to plug our numbers in. So our force of friction is 60. We're looking for the coefficient. Our normal force was, what, 784? So divide both sides by 784, and you get, what, 0 0.077? Good. Do you have any questions about that? OK. Part C and D both deal with air resistance. So uh, we didn't actually take notes on air resistance, but there was a, like a half page question about it at the bottom of the worksheet. I guess it was 3, 4, one about weight. So here's what you need to know about air resistance, you guys. First of all, and probably most importantly, you need to know that the faster an object moves, the more, air, more force air resistance exerts. Okay? And you know that because you've been on a roller coaster or a moped or gone down a hill quickly on a bike. Right? And the faster you go, the more the wind messes up your air, right? Okay? So to do problem C, I guess you didn't even really need to do that. It's just this. Look, you got a 45 kilogram box. Gravity is going to pull down. 45 times 9.8 is 441. Which way is air resistance going to go, you guys? Upward, right? It's resisting the motion. Please make sure you remember to call it air resistance, FA. It is not a normal force. Why is there no normal force in this problem? Yeah, there's no, there's no surface touching it, right? Somebody wrote me a big note about friction. Do we understand why there's no friction here? It's not sliding or trying to slide on anything, right? 
So are there any other forces besides gravity and air? No. So add up your forces to get your net force. It gives you what? Negative 306 for a net force, I think. And then find your acceleration by doing net force over mass. And you get negative 6.86 meters a second squared. Good? Yeah, good. So um, if there was no air resistance, would that mean you'd start with weight? Correct. Okay. Yeah, because then your only force would be gravity, right? Everybody set? Okay. Question D talks about terminal velocity. So look, you guys. So this object right now is falling. It's going to gain speed, isn't it? As it gains speeds, air resistance gets bigger, right? But then it gains speed, and air resistance gets bigger. Gain speed, air resistance gets bigger. Until you reach your terminal velocity. Terminal velocity occurs when your net force is zero and your acceleration is zero, right? So automatically, I can put zeros in there because that's what terminal velocity means. When you drop an object, eventually it stops accelerating because of air resistance. So now just make your drawing. 60 kilogram box. Gravity is 60 times 9.8 gives you negative 588. Newtons. What does the air resistance have to be, you guys? 588. That's it. That's all you got to do on that one. Follow? All right. Everybody good with the air resistance stuff? There's one other question about this on the review, so we'll talk about it a little bit more there. I want to make sure we get to part DNF. So questions on anything before I get to E or F. All right. E and F. Friction resists motion, not force. All right. So in E, here's the deal. We've got a 25 kilogram box. It's at rest. Right away, I can put in my gravity. All of the forces on this problem are horizontal, so what else can I do? I can put in that normal force, right? So they are equal in that problem because those are the only two up and down forces and there's no acceleration up or down. All right, then it says Roy pushes right with 60 newtons and Sally pushes left with 100 newtons. Good? So that's your starting point. Are there questions of that? All right. Are there any other forces here? Yes, for sure. What force? Friction. I don't know yet if it's static or kinetic. Why? I don't know if it's moving yet. Right? But if it does move, which way is it going to move, you guys? It's starting at rest. So if it moves, which way does it have to move? There's only one. If it moves, it's winning. It's going to move because Sally's winning. So it's going to go this way, right? Maybe if it moves. And friction opposes motion. So which way is friction going to go? To the right. So now we just got to decide what kind of friction and how much. Good? So what is static friction going to try to do? It's going to try to prevent it from moving. So your first question should be, can static friction prevent the object from sliding? If you don't know if it's moving or not, that's your first question. Can static friction prevent the object from moving, from sliding? So to answer that, you've got to find your maximum static friction, right? So for us, that's, let's see, our coefficient of friction is 0 0.3. It's always the bigger one. Times your normal force of 245. So multiply that, and you get 73.5 newtons. 
Good? All right. Now, if we want to prevent the motion completely, you okay? Just follow along for this one. Yeah, here you go. Um, so if we want to prevent the motion entirely, how much force would friction need? 40. Some of you guys are saying 40. Why? Why 40? Where are you getting that from? What do you got, Michelle? Because Sally is negative 100 newtons, and to cancel it out, all you need is 40. Because Roy's already providing 60. 60, right? So Roy's force is 60 less, so we need, or sorry, Roy's force is 40 less, so we need to help him out with another 40 newtons, right? Follow? Uh, OK, so how much force does static friction have in its wallet? 73, right? Like that's, this is sort of how much it's got. Is it going to use all of it? No, because it's lazy. So how much is it going to use? Just 40. Oops. That says static and then 40. Yeah, Joe. So if it was greater than 100, that would have you would have to do static? If what was greater than 100? Uh, uh, the max static. Uh, no. So. Like the 73.5. Seven, what would need to change? Like, how, how would you know if it would move in? So right now, without friction. Here, maybe here's an easy way to do it. Without friction, what's our net force? 40. Okay. Can static friction prevent, use 40 newtons to prevent the motion? Yes. Yes. And so there's your answer right there. So your static friction then is 40. Uh, I didn't answer your question. Ask your question one more time. What does the number have to be? Which number? Uh, the 73.5. Okay. What would this have to be for what? For you to know it was moving. If that was less than 40, then it would move. Because to prevent the motion, we need 40 newtons. If you made this out, like negative 300, I think that would help explain it. Sure, yeah. And so, yeah. And so what Alex is saying is, hypothetically, what if this was negative 300? OK, then we have 300 newtons this way and 60 that way, right? Joey, you get up to there? How much force would you need to prevent the motion there? Get 300 this way and only 60 that way. No, 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 Here. What if I had given you this problem? What if the force of Sally had been 300 newtons and Roy had been pushing this way with, what was it, 60 newtons? Yeah. Okay, we just figured out that our static friction max was what, 73? All right, so. Oh, shoot. All right, so. Sally's pushing this way with 30 newtons, sorry, 300 newtons. Roy's pushing that way with 60. Good, up to there. All right, hypothetically, suppose you, Joey, wanted to stop this thing from moving. What would you have to do? How much force, or how would you figure out how much force? 240, right? Okay, that's what static friction is trying to do. Static friction wants to stop the object from moving. Okay? But static friction is not as strong as Joey. Static friction's only got 73 newtons in its wallet. But you just told me it needs 240. So then it would be moving. Good? Okay. In our example here, we had 100 newtons that way and 60 that way. So to prevent the motion, instead of needing 240, we only need 40. Good. And then static friction's like, screw you, 40 newtons. I got 73 newtons in my wallet. And so it uses 40 of them to stop the, stop the motion. Cool? All right, thank you for being persistent when you didn't get it. Do you really get it now, or are you just, OK. Is everybody good? All right, we only got like two minutes here. That's not enough time to get through F. So let me do F tomorrow at the start of the hour, and then you'll have the rest of the hour to work tomorrow. Good? All right, yes. Yeah. Oh, hang on, let me stop the recording.